Hello everyone and welcome back to the 3T Path channel. My name is Kiri Daridas and today I want to talk about a bit of a weird subject but so bear with me. I want to talk about what it's like to incarnate as an animal or plant because I get this comment frequently people say what's the point of reincarnating as an animal or a plant after you've been a human being. That makes no sense. It's a useless life. They, you know, if you're in, you won't remember what you did, you won't understand what's going on. And they seem to have this idea that incarnating as an animal or a plant is completely useless, as if life would only happen in the human body. So I want to try to explain to you that is not the case at all. And I think you'll see it as well. Now, this idea that only in human life do you really experience life and you have consciousness and, and fear and love and likes. And this idea is actually a projection of the idea that the human body is where the consciousness is coming from. But it's not. Your consciousness, your feelings, your thoughts, they're not just coming from your, they're not coming from your body. Your body is just a vehicle. They're actually coming from your soul. And it is the soul that reincarnates. So the body isn't that important, not as important as you might think. Now, the one thing, of course, the human body has a very one special advantage it has is that it has the ability to philosophize. What does that mean? What is that based on? That is based on a weird power we have, which is a little dangerous, but it's what makes us, what gives us the edge to be able to philosophize not just reason, but it's the ability to travel in time. Not, you know, physically travel in time, but mentally travel in time. So this ability we have as humans to go to the past or go to the future, this ability to leave the here and now and travel to the past and think about all the things in the past and analyze the past so carefully and then go to the future and analyze what the future may hold for us. This is what allows us to be able to become spiritual because then we can analyze and say, look, what, you know, I look back, I look forward and there's something missing and then we search out for transcendence and we understand, oh yeah, past lives, future, well, there's nothing in the future that I haven't done in the past. So then you can become spiritual, you can start asking yourself, who am I? But of course, this ability to travel in time is also the source of all our miseries. Because they, you know, we travel to the past through lamentation, melancholy, and depression, and then our minds are always in the future, of course, and we're suffering anxiety, frustration, fear, right? So, like, it's also it has it's a it's a great power, and of course, in the three T path and the yoga path, we learn to bring this, you know, our minds to the here and now, mindfulness to try to keep in line with reality, that what I call the reality paradigm, so we don't get lost in this system. Okay, so that's, the, that's what humans have. Animals don't have that so much. You can see animals that something bad happens to them and they're just, you know, they lose a leg or something and they don't get sad, depressed. They're just like, okay, I've got three legs and they kind of go on with life as it is, you know, so they tend to be quite easily in the here and now. Now, let's go to the animal life. But taking that away, the animals are still experiencing life completely. Now, with the added bonus that they're completely in the here and now. Now, a puppy has the level of mindfulness of a great mindfulness master. Imagine like this topmost Buddhist mindfulness master and a puppy has the same level of mindfulness power. Can you imagine? Just completely present all the time, completely experiencing reality. Not only that, but they have those enhanced senses. So completely in the here and now with enhanced senses. Can you imagine how intense that experience is? Beautiful, intense experience. Very much absorbing reality in touch with reality. So that's why animals are living this intense life. And they can learn about you know, the shelter and friends and, 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 and fear and pleasure. And they can, they're, they're living all these things. They're living all these things intensely 
with a level of intensity we hardly ever get to because our minds are so distracted. Because we have these big minds, but they get distracted easily. So we miss out on life, but they're not missing out on life at all. They're completely in the here and now. They're living connections with others, you know, maybe others in the pack or with the enemies, or completely aware of life, of nature, in contact with nature, with the, what's going on in nature, the smells and the sounds. Very intense life. And in that kind of intense life, you're learning to live, you're, you're following your desires, you're seeing what desires bring, you're experiencing life in, in all sorts of ways, in different environments. And then, of course, the animals, they can live in environments, of course, we could never live in the deep, in the deep ocean, flying in the sky, playing. You can see like animals play a lot, they love, enjoy. So they have all that, they're living all these things that you can live in a human life as well. Now, what about a plant, you might say? Well, a plant has achieved also a very important yogic power. So a great yogic power is called um, pratyahara. It means absorbing your senses, retracting them from the outside world to the inside world. Now, think of a plant. Oh, it's like automatic pratyahara. The plant, no vision no sound, absorbed, and rooted, right? We try to become rooted. Now we do exercise, let's you know, get a little grounded. But they're automatically grounded. I mean, think about you know, tree pose, right? So the tree is just there so firm, rooted to the ground, Pratyahara. I mean, that's advanced the yogic levels. That is advanced yogic practice to be completely grounded, fixed, stable. Because I don't know if you know this, but what a, the true reason for doing the asanas, the, the goal of the different yogic postures and asanas was to have bodily like equilibrium. So your body could be steady, a steady body that doesn't bother you, that doesn't bring you messages of pain, of discomfort, of unbalance. That's what the purpose of asanas is. So you can have a steady, steady body. Now imagine a tree so beautifully, majestically steady, powerful, rooted, pratyahara, no sight, no vision. Imagine that state of inner calm and contemplation. It's a beautiful state. Awesome. I mean, it kind of makes you want to be a tree just right now, right? To get, get a break from all this and crazy, disturbed mind, human life running around, you know, just to be with your senses collected, rooted, grounded. Silence. It's wonderful. Wonderful experience. So, of course, God isn't mean. God didn't create millions of different species just to have like, oh no, you can only be human, that's the only good thing, the, other, the rest is suffering. No, it's not suffering. Actual, real suffering is really just in the, a badly lived human life is where you get like intense suffering. Of course, animals can be abused by humans, but generally like, a, you know, suffering comes from here when we don't live well. So that, but you know, animal plants, trees, they're not, you know, it's like they're having these beautiful focused experiences. And that's why we have to respect them. That's why we have to protect them. That's why in yoga we have ahimsa. We want to protect all living because it's, we value every life. You know, the life of an insect, of a plant, of an animal. They're valuable experiences for those souls. And we have to take that very seriously. So anyway, so that's, the, I'm just trying to explain, like, there is a purpose in reincarnating in other species. It's not for nothing. There are intense living experiences as well, which create, you know, some scars, which will then help you when you become a human to seek out liberation and, you know, go back home, back to God and go beyond all these births and deaths. So that's it. And let me know if you understood it. If you have any questions, leave your questions below. And have a rest of your day with lots of peace and lots of love.